Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential function, I mean an exponential equation with complex numbers. We have e to the power z equals 1 plus i to the power 3 plus 4i. So this is complex exponentiation, we're raising a complex number to a complex power. What is that supposed to mean? Is that going to be a complex number? Can it be a real number? What is it going to look like? Let's find out. So on the left hand side we have something nice because it's e to the power z. On the right hand side though we need to do a little bit of work especially with the base. So if you have a complex number to another complex number you can actually define it just like the real numbers as e to the power ln something. So let's see how we can handle this. First of all, I'm going to start by changing 1 plus i from standard form to polar form. Remember 1 plus i is basically a point in the complex plane which can be expressed as 1 comma 1 but we can also express it as a, as a vector. Its distance from 0 is going to be root 2 units from Pythagorean theorem. This is 1, this is i, this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis, so on and so forth. Well, what's really important is the angle, the argument. The argument in this case is going to be pi over 4 because this is an isosceles right triangle. Make sense? So we can basically write any number as r times e to the i theta, theta being the argument, and r being the modulus. So we got everything we need. Let's go ahead and write 1 plus i as root 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4. Obviously, this is just one of the values of 1 plus i because we're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to this. So instead of writing pi over 4, we could replace this with pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And then when you multiply it by i, you're basically going to be adding 2 pi n i to this original value. Make sense? So. That's pretty much what it's going to look like. You can always add that at the end if you want. Once you get the imaginary part, that's just going to be added. Okay, so let's see how we can use this to solve for z. Now, let's go ahead and replace 1 plus i with that. What are we going to do with the 3 plus 4i? Pretty much nothing. The exponent doesn't that matter that much, even though it's going to be, you know, factored into the expression. Uh, but the base is more important at this point. So let's go ahead and write this as follows. Then e to the power z equals 1 plus i, which can be written as root 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4. And then we're going to go ahead and raise it to the power 3 plus 4i. Okay? So here's the fun part. How do you raise a complex number to another complex power? So suppose you have something like u to the power w, u and w are both complex numbers. Obviously we can write this as e to the power ln u to the w or e to the power w ln u. The most important part here is that because u is equal to 1 plus i, how do we log a complex number? So let's go ahead and talk about that and then we can kind of go ahead and plug this into the equation, right? Okay, we can also do the following. We can actually at this point natural log both sides and bring the 3 plus 4i down so we don't have to deal with this. Make sense? So both approaches are I think fine. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this. This might look a little more complicated but let's go ahead and natural log both sides at this point. Now when we do that something interesting is going to happen and the powers are going to come down so we're going to be able to express this in a simpler form. So let's go ahead and ln both sides and then when we do these are powers that are going to be brought to the front we're going to get z times ln e which can be written as z equals now we have the ln or natural log of a product which can be written as the sum of two natural logs right so it's going to be ln root 2 plus wait a minute we forgot to bring down the 3 plus 4i so we're supposed to bring this down first so that's going to be 3 plus 4i multiplied by the ln of a product, which is going to be written as ln root 2 plus 
ln e to the power i pi over 4. But ln e is 1, so just like before, we're going to be able to bring this down and write it as i times pi over 4 because ln e is equal to 1. Okay? So this is going to become the following then. z equals 3 plus 4i times ln root 2 plus i times pi over 4. And again, instead of writing this as a pi over 4, you could replace it with pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, which is adding multiples of 2 pi. Makes sense? But let's just go with the principal branch. Let's keep it simple. All right, so what we're going to do next is distribute everything and simplify this. So we're going to multiply the real parts, 3 ln root 2, and then we're going to multiply 3 times that, which is i times 3 pi over 4, and then 4i multiplied by ln root 2. Something interesting is going to happen here. ln root 2 can actually be written as ln 2 to the power 1 half, which is 4 times... 4 times 1 half times ln 2, and then 2 goes into 4 twice, so this can be written as 2 ln 2. Makes sense? But there's an i, so i times 2 ln 2. And you can also write it as ln 4, so no big deal. It doesn't matter which one you prefer, you know, it's the same thing. And then finally, we're going to multiply the imaginary parts, which is going to give us i squared, and as you know, hopefully you do, i squared is equal to negative 1, and that's going to give us negative pi. Because what happens is 4 uh, goes into 4, and we end up with a simplified version. Make sense? Fairly simple, right? Let's go ahead and simplify this even more. So we can go ahead and write this as 3 ln root 2 minus pi. And then we're going to put together these imaginary parts, 3 pi over 4. Or I could probably write the ln first, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to write 2 ln 2, and then plus 3 pi over 4, and all of that is actually multiplied by i. So we were able to write this in standard form, or I guess you could call it rectangular form. In other words, this can be called a, and this can be called b. So we were able to write z as a plus bi, which is also the name of this channel, right? Alright, great. So that's pretty much it. And obviously, I just worked with the principal branch here. I did not consider adding these uh, pi, two pi n's. But if you want it at this point, you can add them. But guess what? When you add that, obviously, it's just going to be mixed into this mess. And it's going to be real messy. Okay, anyways, hopefully you get the idea. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.